Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Brew Room. For The Brew Room today, we got a very great guest, and her name is Dar- Darcy Rose, and she she's an uh, actress and a musician, and I'm really looking forward to, talk, to talking to her. We're going to ask her, of course, about music and acting, and I am Rocco Cross. I am the host at Stutters. I am the host of The Brew Room, and my interview with Darcy is coming up next. There. Hello and um, welcome, welcome to Grew and thanks so so much for coming on and being a guest on on the show tonight. Thanks for having me. Of course, yes. And first thing I want to ask: we're we're in that that time of the season, Halloween season, <laughs> and it's no, are we? Hall- <laughs> <laughs> Halloween. Halloween is like. A, ho- a holiday I really love. I'm a big horror fan. Halloween, like haunted houses and all that stuff. Um, are you dressing up this year for Halloween? I'm probably not dressing up because I'm not going anywhere. This is probably <laughs> the most you're going to get out of me this season. I got my my handmade. I think I made these when I was like six or seven. Oh, um, really? Yeah, wicked earrings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm a nerd. Um, but yeah, I probably I have a shirt that's like in glow in the dark, and it's like this is my costume. Give me candy. I'll probably just wear that and call it <laughs> any chocolate. I mean, that's the point of Halloween, right? Is chocolate anyway? So right, right, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. You, you know, you, you go out, dress up as something. I mean, I can't go out trick or treating now. I'm too. I'm 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 over the age limit and over the height. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I would go trick or treating with my aunt every year uh, growing up, and I we would always do like couple costumes. Like it was mm-hmm. Peter Pan and Twink- Tinkerbell. Uh, there was Glinda and Alphaba, and then Alphaba and Glinda the next year because I was like <laughs> both had to do. She was a trooper, Sally and Jack <laughs> from Nightmare. Nice, nice. Head. Yes. Yes, Raggedy Ann and Andy. We did the whole cast of um, Annie dead when we went to the uh, haunted hey, uh, haunted Queen Mary. The Queen Mary we went to, and we did the whole cast of Annie dead. Nice, yeah. nice. Rose Hill, Sandy, and all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know that that's fun though, because that's yes. what Halloween is. It's supposed to be fun and yes. spooky and mm-hmm. all that fun fun stuff. And you know, the most important thing is candy and chocolate. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about this year? Have have you went to any like haunts, like the haunted houses or anything? No, I mostly because of the pandemic, I've just been keeping a little profile and trying to stay home and, and keep my my cast safe and stuff, not to get any get myself sick and then turn my family or anyone I'm working with. That's true. Uh, I've been mostly spending my October binging the X Files for the first time because I'm behind. Okay. So I've been from the beginning watching everything. I think I'm already in season five. I probably shouldn't say that that I've watched five seasons. I have the movie next in in one month. Um, <laughs> I have no regrets. <laughs> everything i take in inspires my writing so i have no nice regrets. nice so by watching something like the the x files does that make you want to write about aliens and classified information from the government <laughs> and <laughs> um, i don't think any particular project makes me like want to write about that subject because it's kind of like i i just saw that i already saw that uh story it's it's more like the way they tell the stories and stuff and and different things oh i hadn't thought of that or um you know i i like the voiceovers via files and stuff um the the reports at at the end of the episode they did that more in the beginning of the series um so it's more just story the way they tell the story different ideas like oh i hadn't that's an interesting idea and then kind of makes me think of something that i'm writing in a different perspective so nice. yeah yeah. And what about horror films? Are you big on watching horror films, like especially okay. this time of the season? Yes, yes. Well, of course, we watch Hocus Pocus and Nightmare Before Christmas every year since I was a kid. Um, that's your, you know, your family friendly horror kind well, of yeah. Halloween movies. Um, but yeah, I think this year ended up being mostly X Files. But for the most part, we try to go through all of the slasher and horror movies that we haven't seen before, nice. or at least that I haven't seen before um in my family so you know nightmare before elm street and kind of halloween kind of going through all of the all the classics and then the new ones and 
yeah, making your way through and scaring yourself and not being able to sleep. It's the best. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just went and saw the brand new Halloween film, Halloween Kills, and it was. I mean, a lot. The film's getting mixed mixed hmm. re reactions from people that went and saw it there's some people saying it was great some people saying they didn't like it but me i actually really liked it because um michael myers is like brutal in this movie and you hmm. know he's he's a slasher that's what he's supposed yeah. to do <laughs> i have i have a hard time finding fault with anything that jamie lee curtis is in yeah. <laughs> just like okay yeah i'll watch that's okay. <laughs> I was I was looking on your page and I saw something but I wanted to ask you what it is and how how you're involved in it blood solstice is it yes I actually I wrote uh the score oh nice which is lovely yeah I've been ending I've found myself writing a lot more music for projects that I'm not singing which is an interesting um interesting place to be and I'm very you know excited for it It kind of started with Big Shot you know writing writing songs for for myself and then for the other actors and then I wrote the the Beth Macbeth overture for that as well and that kind of kicked me off into overtures and scoring and stuff and now I find myself like doing it like I'm watching the x-files and going nice score like yeah okay that's cool Ooh, that's a good run yeah and on the door hit nice <laughs> <laughs> my brain's in a different place now I'm enjoying that nice nice yeah. <laughs> and um you also did soaps uh I saw you did the young young and the restless yes. and the bold and beautiful and you played the same character in both shows, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was a CBS ping pong ball for a little while there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Eileen Davidson, who played my mother, she went over to Bold and Beautiful as the same character. And to make sure that neither one of them looked like bad parents, they had me flip flop back and forth, uh, which was fun for me because I would just, you know, go down the hall and, and, and shoot the other show on the same day, uh, which was funny because some people thought that I would actually that got out apparently that I show up, shot both shows in one day and I had someone ask me what was it like to fly to Wisconsin and shoot Young and the Restless and then come back to LA and shoot Bold and the Beautiful and I just didn't have the heart to tell her that wasn't accurate I was like whoo jet lag you know it's the Young and the Rest of Us and I'm like eight like you know yeah just didn't have the heart nice. and how how long were you on like the the both shows for I think it was uh, in total like five years I think I was oh, on wow. Bold and Beautiful for two years and obviously that was at the same time I think it was like five years yeah I started when I was five um wow. or just turned five I think if I'm remembering correctly okay <clears throat> and and like a lot of people don't realize like with like soaps because some people watch soaps and they're like ah uh, but like there's a lot of hard work that goes into soaps I, I mean the, the actors are doing it i think five five days a week they're all on weekends right and it's like a ton of scripts and you have to yeah yeah Yeah, i always say it's the best training that i ever had because you know i i I constantly i seek out more training and learn the things that i haven't done like i went to rada for shakespeare because i had no exposure to shakespeare prior to that um because all my training for was on the job and it Mm -hmm. started with the young and the restless like i was five doing an episode a day and getting my monologue rewritten five (laughs) eight times within the span of eight minutes and I had the time between getting from the booth to the stage to learn the new edit like B&B does multiple shows a day and on on that show you know everyone remembered their own continuity like it just everything it was four cameras too you know we'd rehearse it once and then we'd like shoot it once you know hope you did it right because that's it (laughs) you know and so when you come from that and then you are doing a project and you get multiple takes and multiple choices and here do you want to play around it's like what this is like a vacation are we just playing what's going on it because it really trains you to get it right the first time and then everything else is a luxury so coming from there it's just i remember when i was working at desperate housewives i didn't have many scenes with eva longoria because it was very you know mostly the family 
Mm -hmm. I've mm -hmm. had a couple scenes with Eva Longoria and the, it was moving just like it always does normal pace except for me and for Eva who was also from soaps from Young and the Restless um I remember she's out there she just went what's happening why aren't we shooting and it, it wasn't like she wasn't blaming anyone it was just funny but it was the sense of oh, I'm home <laughs> I know this I remember this <laughs> I did one. I did one show. I did the the pilot of um, I think what became Sunny with a Chance. It was Sketchpad at the time, and we did I think like two weeks of rehearsal. Okay. And I was like seven or so at the time, so it was kind of still on the heels of you know, the Restless. And I just turned to my mom at one point. And I was like, "When are we gonna shoot this thing?" Like I, I knew my lines like <laughs> before the table read. What's going on? <laughs> like it was just such a such a foreign concept to me. So, yeah best best training in the world in short yeah nice nice yeah <laughs> and, and how how was it like doing doing voice work was you, yeah. you were saying you did voice work and you've been on a lot of television shows like uh and Cora and all them yeah. like 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 how 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 was it like doing doing voice work for for, for big shows like like yeah. Cora and all them yeah, yeah, I'm a voice bender. Um, yeah, it was it was incredible. Like, I something that's fun about voiceover, I think, because it's kind of already naturally a little high concept. You have the the ability to do characters that you'd maybe never get to do in on on screen. Like, all five foot one of me probably wouldn't be an action hero uh, until I write it myself. Thank you very much. Right, exactly. But, yeah, you know, write yourself the roles you want. Um, but in animation, it's just about what you're capable of doing and what fits the character. It's all about what you can do with your voice. So there's a lot more freedom. If, if you know, you find yourself as a, as an airbender or as a princess or as a piece of toast, like it just, it depends on, on the story. So that's kind of fun. It's like the highest form of playing pretend of like when you were a kid, except you're just doing it and getting paid. What? Yeah. Like how? Um, <laughs> but it's it's fun like yeah i mean like there's there's i remember this there's this one pilot that i i just did that i would never in in a hundred years get cast to do it on camera because it's like yeah that's how i kind of look uh and i'm just like this rough and tumble like action person it's like this is awesome yeah um you know you just get to you get to mess around you get to do funny voices what's not to like about that and the people are incredible too i think the voiceover community in particular is the most um giving creatives oh, wow. that I've ever met yeah I, I remember I was in an audition for I think it was a video game and I was sitting next to this woman who I was up against because you know a 40 year old and eight year old can be up for the same role in animation yeah uh, true and, right and that's, that's awesome I've, <laughs> I've, done, I've done little boy voices um not little boys I have to make sure I say that correctly because that got the paramount security guards uh looking at me funny one time um <laughs> But I had this woman who I was sitting next to, like, ask me, she said, do you know how to cry like a baby? And I said, no. She was like, oh, okay, I'll teach you. Go like this. And we're in the waiting room to compete for this yeah. same role. And she was like, oh, you don't know this specialized skill that could get me a job that you wouldn't be able to get? I'll show you. And she just taught oh, wow. me right there. That, ah! She just taught me while we were sitting there how to do it. Wow, and, that's crazy. But that's like the voiceover community. It's like, because everyone is so talented and it's so like if you don't get the role it's because someone else was more right for it it's not it's so it's just like there's no reason not to pull each other up and mm -hmm. and I think there's just an inherent level of play um in in voiceover which probably explains why we have a a, a comedy show it's all voiceover actors <laughs> we talk funny it's just a bunch of voiceover actors making jokes on stage together and it was like <laughs> the best my first comedy show also actually that was a very bad mistake that worked out really well uh oh. never doing comedy before and then doing it in front of just harnell it's like okay <laughs> hi cedric <clears throat> cool let me make wacko laugh um you know <laughs> not a great bet but it worked so yeah nice <laughs> and um two shows that i like really loved i, I saw you were on on both of them how was the sets like for Ghost Whisperer and Medium? Oh, very fun. Ghost Whisperer was actually where I learned how to um, crochet amigurumis, uh, stuffed animals. 
Oh, okay. Uh, the hairstylist loves loves. Mm, was it makeup artist or hairstylist? I think hairstylist <laughs> um, loves hairstylist was making a Snoopy, I think, for her nephew, and she like gave me her book and taught me how to do it, and then that kind of became an onset hobby of mine for then many years to come because oh, wow. you know you're waiting around, so you're you're making a little stuffed animal. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, love Jennifer Love Hewitt is is so sweet. The whole cast was fun. It was it was just a lot of fun. And same same with Medium. It was just I wanted to take the dollhouse home. That, that I, know, I remember that. That was a fun dollhouse. And I think I was, I think I had a cold for medium or something. And I was supposed to look like death warmed over. And it was oh, like, no. perfect. <laughs> You've been to hair and makeup already, right? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Go, just go. Go to side. You're good. Bye. <laughs> yeah. So worked out well. Uh, yeah. I mean, it seems like it did. That, you know, you, you're going to set with a cold not feeling well and you have to play someone that is deaf so yeah, it, go, a, it goes a, hand in hand <laughs> yeah I had a bunch of like guest stars back to back where I was all playing sick or dying kids like I think private practice was like I think I shot private practice either right before or right after medium and it was the same cold oh my god <laughs> Yeah, and this is too inside pool, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, the character had cystic fibrosis, and I remember after the the big crying scene, which was a lot of fun to do, but it's this devast just this horrible, devastating scene. And I'm sobbing and crying, and as it's continuing, um, I start coughing, and I'm I'm really like struggling to breathe and and all this stuff. And I remember, um, I think it was the director came up to me afterwards, is like, "Wow, that that hacking cough, that was really authentic. That was good, good job." And I was like thanks i did my research like <laughs> <laughs> thank you you know <laughs> thanks <laughs> i studied at rada <laughs> yeah i was just very sick but it worked out <laughs> wow that's awesome hey you know wit they don't know won't hurt them right <laughs> <laughs> What's that sound? Her nebulizer. What? Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, a, it was a fun run of guest stars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, like, how did how did you want to get involved with both, like, doing acting and 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 songs? Because mm -hmm. I mean, you you write songs plus you also sing too. Yeah. Yeah. I the songwriting was kind of something that was our, always part of who I was from a very early age in a odd sense like my my mom always prides herself on the fact that she never made me do anything except for piano because I would like I couldn't even write but I would do these like squiggles on a piece of paper and then go okay. want to hear my song and then I'd sing it and then like two weeks later I would write more squiggles and say want to hear more <laughs> of my song and it would be like the same verse and the same chorus and then a new verse and a bridge. And mm -hmm. I, would, I would remember it and I was like three or something and I was remembering the different pieces of the thing I put together. Um, and she was like, okay, she has, to, she has to take piano. She's a songwriter, she needs to know piano. Um, and it took me probably 10 years. I hated piano. I loved I Oh, really? To, I loved guitar. I hated piano. I detested it. And then it was like the moment my hands kind of caught up with my brain, or at least started to catch up with my brain, because I think that's an ongoing process. <laughs> and I could actually start to write what I heard in my head. It was like, oh, this is amazing. And oh, wow. now I just, I can't get enough of it. And I'm like, I have five minutes. Let me go play Fantastics. Like, I'm going to go write a jazz song. Um, and then... You know, I, my, my feet couldn't even touch the pedals and I'm like playing. Um, but, and it was, you know, the best thing she ever did because with that came sheet music and then the, the Beth Macbeth Overture and the Double Double, the Witches Song. Mm -hmm. The Witches Song was originally a cappella. They wanted to have piano as well. Oh. So I added the piano um, and sheet music in my trailer without an instrument anywhere near me because I was oh, in my wow. trailer uh, while we were filming the Dagger Song scene. My, my singing and, and Sophia Mitri Schloss singing the, the dagger song scene. Um, and then when I finished that, I just went and wrote the overture and I just did it all on my laptop in, in sheet music. Um, and I don't, you know, that's a, a skill that I didn't know I had until then, but I don't think it was a skill I would have had if I didn't have that strong foundation of hands on the, on the keys. And, and, and I also learn a lot of different instruments so I can kind of gauge if it's even remotely possible to play something on a certain instrument. Um, so I was able to kind of do it. Yeah. I, but the acting, I started in theater. 
I started, okay. you know, in dance classes and and dance recitals because my mom just wanted me to have those skills. If it was something that I would like, you have to start early. So she's like, oh, we'll, we'll give it a try. Um, and uh, apparently I started sobbing after one of the first dance rehearsals and she was like, ah, oh, telling the therapy, like she traumatized me for life. And I just started crying, I want to do it again. And she was like, cool, okay, uh, this is going to be a thing now. Uh, and from there, I just did theater from when I was three. I did my first show was Annie, I think. I don't remember oh, what it was okay. the first show, but I've done Annie like three different times. Um, Sandy, Molly, and Annie. Oh, wow. Um, Annie Jr., yeah. So I, I started on stage and, and so music and acting and dancing were always kind of combined in my head. It was just, it was an all encompassing field. Um, Voice over tip, move your hands, don't hit the mic like I just did. Uh, <laughs> that's probably, yeah, I'm a voice over actor. <laughs> so, yeah. So do, do you ever, like when you did the voiceover, were, did, you ever, did you ever do video games too or? Yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. That's um, all I can I'm, say at the moment. Yeah. I, I love video games, so so I, I have to ask that question. <laughs> I'm very glad, and I'll have a. a I did um, Final Fantasy in the past. I did. I did another game, um, which I'm not sure if that one's out yet. Uh, and then there's some other stuff that I I can't you know talk about. Of course, of course. It be, it, it, I'm I'm excited for it's gonna be it's gonna be cool. Nice, nice. And um, 2022 ish. Okay. Yeah. The one one of the big the big roles you had was from a TV series, Big Shot. And um, so how was it like playing playing your role of of heart of of Harp Harper and the the journey the the journey the journey that she had on throughout yeah. throughout throughout the show. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. You know, I think it's always, it's always really exciting as an actor when you get a character that actually has a, a, a journey, you know, um, and I think there's some shows that are very serialized. Um, I think you see that a lot in animation. So like, for instance, Princess Amber having such a big arc from pilot movie to ending as the, you know, future queen of Enchantia or the once in future queen, if you count the Rompkins, hey uh, which <laughs> um, you know, those journeys are, are very um you're very grateful for because that's that's kind of it's exciting to see a character to have a character that you do grow is amazing um who who i who i am is probably my favorite song that princess amber sang i mean oh, okay. bigger is better is a is a you know a, a barn burner but who i i never heard a, a princess a disney princess say i don't think i'm a good enough person to help so who i am i thought was a really um special song craig gerber shout out uh jimmy mitchell hi guys um <laughs> but yeah, so then the same thing with, with Big Shot, you know, and John Cavanaugh, amazing music, by the way. Just got to shout out everybody. It's just going to be, the rest of the interview is just going to be me shouting out people. Kevin okay, Clay, you go. Michael G. Stern, how you doing? Lori Israel. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, <laughs> Eugene, Salandra, Misty. Okay. Um, but yeah, so with Big <laughs> Shot, uh, I'll, stop, I'll stop doing that, I swear. <laughs> no, you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with Big Shot, you know, it, first of all, it was an interesting journey as from behind the camera because I was not just an actor on a show anymore. I was part of the creative team, you know, mm. writing all the songs. And that was a big first for me. I was always writing songs for myself, but this was the first time that, you know, a, a show went, yes, and also more please. Um, you know, so doing that was a big first and just an incredible journey to be a part of. But then Harper as a character as well, just as an actor, Harper would be a, a fun character to do regardless, you know, taking the music aside, Harper mm. itself is a uh, amazing character. She's so complex and they handle her, her story and all of what she is with, with such um, care and, and fun. She's just fun to do. Um, and it's, you know, it's the first queer, I wrote the first queer love song on Disney. That doesn't happen every day, clearly. Oh, really? Um, yeah, yeah, everything to me, and it was the first queer kiss on on, on Disney. So, well, well, yeah, I know about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I guess it was one and the same, you know. So, um, so doing that, you know, and it was the beginning of Pride Month too. It was June fourth. I was like, happy. Pride. So awesome. It was great, you know. So just there's so many individual things during the thing of Big Shot that would be like tent poles of that was cool, but then they just keep accumulating. It's just 
amazing all around, you know, um, working with Dean Laurie, like, and John Samos, and the, the cast is incredible. Like, just, yeah, there's nothing about it that was, that wasn't fun. Well, I mean, getting shut down uh, four times probably wasn't fun. Ugh. That's pandemic for, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just, so, it was so creatively, you know, collaborative and, and yeah, it was, it was so much, so much fun. Yeah, great journey. And I don't, yeah, I'm very grateful for that. Awesome. Yeah. And you were talking about, you, you know, one of the scenes on the Dis Disney, yeah. the, the kiss that, that you did, it was the first ever queer, queer, queer kiss on, yeah. on like the whole, the whole station. Right. Yeah. yeah. And like, how did it feel to, to, to be like the first person to, to do it? Uh, I, and then, you know, after that, they've, they've done more, but like I you know, were, yeah, that's amazing. you were the first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, well, I think one of the things I, I love right up top, uh, talking about the af the after feelings, not the the doing the during the process, was the fact that once we did once we did it, it was right on the heels was the High School Musical kiss. So it it didn't even remotely feel like okay we did that and now that's it. It was like okay we did that and now here's another one and it, it just felt like it opened up the doors. Yeah. Um, and and then you know High School Musical walked through like it it felt like the beginning of a new chapter and I thought that was very that felt very good um you know I it's there's so many different feelings that kind of happened in different compartments because I don't think it hit us entirely all at once mm -hmm. you know singing the song with Tisha Custodio when we were in the studio with Eve Nelson and and Don Soler uh Don Soler was on Zoom um it, it's kind of hard not to cry singing it and, and playing it because we would do the run-throughs um, for the production team on Zoom, and we were just standing there with our masks and, and face shields on, singing to each other, and kind of going, <laughs> starting to convince a little bit because it's, you know, it's a sweet, it is a sweet song. You know, Mouse is her, her simplicity and her love for Harper was what I was trying to get across, and and it's just simply beautiful in that way, and like the little detail I enjoyed, yeah. you know, doing. Um, so that's just fun in general. And, and everything to me was the song that I pitched to the show, which kind of got the whole writing music for the show thing rolling to begin oh, with. Wow. So just the fact that we're in the studio doing the first song that kind of made this all happen is in and of itself kind of an incredible thing. And, you know, Eve Nelson, who was the producer of the songs, she, you know, checked with the COVID people and made sure it was safe and, and went out of her way to make sure that since that we recorded all the songs for episode eight together. Okay. Um, so I got to have, you know, Sophia Mitri Schloss and Tisha Custodio there like the whole time. And it was like the first record of someone recording my music. So wow. getting to have kind of the whole, all, all the girls of the music side there was, was then a wonderful experience as well. And the cutest dog, by the way, <laughs> just gotta say, um, you know, and then, we weren't aware that it was the first Tisha. And when I say we, I mean, Tisha Custodio and I yeah. we weren't aware that it was the first kiss on Disney. We knew that oh, it was wow. probably going to be special because I think queer representation is so lacking that just in general, it was going to be yay, you know, yeah, for exactly. but, but we didn't know that it was in fact, definitively going to be the first that was not uh, um, in our mind. Luckily that wasn't in our mind until after we filmed it and were shown a cut by Dean Laurie and were told as such. Um, oh, wow. And it was kind of like, oh, wow. But I, I do remember, though, in the in the room when we were filming it, that there was this kind of like this delicateness in the air, like no one wanted to 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 disturb the magic or something. There just yeah. seemed to be something in the air. Like we had people come to set, uh, not come to set, stay late to set um, to watch it happen because apparently and I quote, I need to see this happen. So we knew that there was something special going on. We just didn't know it was also going to be historic. That was not something that we were aware oh. of, um, which was probably a good thing <laughs> at the time that we weren't aware of that. Well, yeah, because that's um, that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, some of the circumstances undercuts the pressure, though, because it's like cut Listerine, you know, because pandemic. So, you know, but 
<laughs> yeah, it was. And I think the way they shot it was just so beautiful. And that was, it was essentially the way that we, um, we pitched it. You know, when mm -hmm. I wrote the song, I sent it to Tisha, we filmed it in, in her apartment, sitting on the floor in front of her couch and sent it in. And the this, this same side and everything, we just did it on set. Um, so there was something, it felt very intimate and it felt very close to how I had orig originally intended the song to be in it. And then having them change the episode to be the same title yeah. was just mind blowing yeah. again. Um, so yeah, it, it was just all in all just incredible. And then seeing Disney keeping the ball rolling, like literally the week after with High School Musical. And I, mm -hmm. I believe, and I don't want to spread rumors, but I believe they're a real couple. So that's sweet in its, in its oh, own song. Okay. Um, the, the the guys from High School Musical. Um, yeah. So it just it was just kind of this whirlwind of of pinch me and what and just magic. It just felt special, you know. Wow. Yeah. I, I mean, would I I I love seeing shows like that because there's there's like so many young teenagers that that are gay or bi and and they're afraid to tell anybody or come out they don't want to be teased they don't want their family to hate them or anything and and then when they see shows like 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 this show and yeah. love love Vic, victor was is like another one and and even chucky like they have a, a right. teenager I who's right. gay on chucky yeah. and i mean even a horror show right <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's good to for young teens to to actually watch these shows because it makes them know that you know it's oh okay to be the person you are yeah. whether whether you're gay straight by whatever and and now i just have lady gaga in my head though <laughs> uh no but you're 100 percent right and that's one of the things that and thank you for reminding me that's one of the things that made i think the way they handled it on big shot special that mm -hmm. it was never a question of does harper like girls it was always a question for mouse does harper like me they you know sexuality is a part of who who these people are but it's not the entirety of them exactly. and their story is one of first love and a first kiss story it's not there and, and that might you know change as they get older because that's because it is part of who you are mm -hmm. but the story was very much about the two people and i you know they had characters teasing each other about the fact they have a crush not the fact that they have a crush on a girl like right right it was and it's young it's you know they're they're high schoolers it's just this kind of innocent crush kind of love and it's not the whole story is not based around the fact that it's two women so mm -hmm. i think in addition to seeing representation in general but seeing representation making it normal like because it is I, I think also makes a difference how the story is told not just yeah. what stories are told so I, you really have to give it up to them for how they did that yeah definitely definitely yes yeah. and i mean i have to ask i, I like m when i was growing up my show was was full full house so <laughs> being around john yeah. john stamos who's, uh, who's uncle jesse <laughs> like how <laughs> How, how was it working working with him <laughs> it was a joy working with him i mean i really i really think a, a big part of how i got writing on the show goes down to his enthusiasm as well you know the idea for everything to me came in when he was asking about the future of marper like what's going to happen and, and mm -hmm. he said i want them to play ukes together at some point because that's what tisha and i had done on set a lot um prior to the lockdown yeah, and I took that as my opportunity, and I said, "I think that Mouse should write a song for me." And Dean Laurie said, a, "A a song written by Mouse that'd be three lines and only facts." And I sang another one of my songs, and you know, Stamos jokingly tried to buy it on the spot. <laughs> but but with that joke though, I kind of I was like, "There's an opening here, okay." And I went home, and then I wrote everything to me. I wrote that song that Dean Laurie joked nice. about. Nice. Um, you know, he is he is a a music dude. Like that's that's his thing. So, you know, getting his appreciation is, is, is delightful. Like when we're doing the fight for the crown scene and he's complimenting the music, but in like very specific detail as, as yeah. a music brain detail, it's, you know, those compliments really 
th- they mean something because he knows what he's talking about and it's, oh, it's definitely. delightful and he's just fun to work with in general you know i remember he was he was giving me um songs that i should be singing that i should have <laughs> in my in my book because he did you know he's obviously he's on broadway and so he was like have you heard this song go do it should be in your book i'm like <laughs> But I listened to it. I'm like, this is right on. Like, I haven't actually sung this way in front of you. And you knew I could do this. Okay. Nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's just he's just fun to work with. He's funny and he's quick on his feet, you know. He comes from the soaps too. So it's, I know That's it's true. my people. That's <laughs> like, true. I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. I mean, any anyone who shared a stage and songs with the beat the Beach Boys is good. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, getting him sending our us covering America to America was a weird experience. And then them being like, yeah, it's really good. It's better than us. What? No. Um, <laughs> you know, very strange. Very, very strange. <laughs> yeah. And I see you're like a really big fan of Ted Lasso and Star Trek too, right? Oh my gosh, yes. Nerd. Um, yeah, I... <laughs> I'll start with Ted Lasso because it's the new two, the two shows. Um, I well, first of all, I just think that Ted Lasso was one of the most brilliant comedies I've ever seen in, in general. Um, I think there is a tendency in in general because it works to punch mm-hmm. down to 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 the the mean humor that's maybe not ill intended but is in fact mean, and to see a show that all of the humor comes from support. Um, and kindness and that have it still be really funny was b- both a fresh breath of fresh air but kind of eye-opening as to how much of the other comedy that was around that is can also be very mean and then you know spoilers for those of you who haven't seen season two they set themselves up as this is a kind-hearted show and then mm-hmm. they kind of break that down because real life isn't like that you're gonna have people who are just fundamentally negative or they're negative yeah. because they're going through something. And so to kind of build, build themselves as one thing and then go, yeah, but also, and then do something completely different and have it still feel completely authentic and truthful to the show. Writing wise is just incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there was moments in season two, which I'm sure you, you know, if you've seen it, what I'm talking yeah. about, you know, yeah. that just like a gut punch and it's just <laughs> because they, they built it up um to be that and then also the cast is incredible but separately i have to say hannah waddingham's voice my god um i started crying during the end of the christmas episode for season two okay uh, just based off of her voice i she just <laughs> opened her mouth and she started wailing and i just started crying and then i jokingly tweeted that i was already dream pitching her a song, which was mm-hmm. not a joke. I, I am dream pitching her a song and they liked it. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I just, uh, writing, I, I do have a song in mind for her character, but writing for her in general would be a dream come true because wow. she's one of those voices, both as an as a actor and as a voice, singer, a vocalist, that's just like, wow, incredible, incredible. And then Star Trek was the other one you asked about. Yeah. Um, yeah. Huge Star Trek nerd. I grew up in Star Trek. I, oh, okay. I'm, oh, yeah. I think I probably from start to end grew up on Voyager, but obviously I watched, um, you know, Next Generation and the original series, of course. Uh, shout out because my friend's on it, Bonnie Gordon. Um, Prodigy, nice. the pilot of Prodigy is incredible. Um, they make you wait for it. It's so good. But I think... And this is stuff I've heard from other people who really love Star Trek too. It, it kind of, it's like this, the search for betterment, not the search for stuff. Like that was in the original, you know, series, there was no money. There was no, like, people just did jobs to better themselves. And that concept I think is probably so foreign to, um, to many societies and stuff. So seeing that is just so cool. And then they keep, reinventing and expanding themselves like with lower decks is incredible and discovery which kind of changed the game as to what a star trek show could be and they they do so many like fantastical stories but they're that are based in science but mm-hmm. by doing so kind of get to touch deeper onto things that are fundamental to us as humans 
uh, even when they're not human. Well, and, yeah, it's always, exactly. and it's always been at the forefront of science too, you know, like cell phones mm -hmm. was kind of, you know, prophesized in Star Trek and the first shuttle was called Enterprise off of, the, off of Star Trek. And I, I, I don't think that there is any other uh, product and by product, I mean like folk tales or anything yeah. that is modern that has so completely gone into the ethos of society and of science and of politics and 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 the way that we interact like you know things like king arthur and and those folk tales from long long back i think are kind of known but star trek is recent and all things being considered and it is so prevalent in in society that that's that's incredible that really goes up to the the creative genius of, of gene roddenberry on, on what he kind of set in motion and the amazing writers and and people now that are taking it forward oh, more and continuing it with the same message and the same feeling i think it's so easy to get lost after many many years as to what it's supposed to be and they don't that's like this is what star trek is about yeah boldly go and they keep <laughs> boldly go <laughs> yeah nice uh, i mean i don't know if you, if you heard about this yet but it, i i thought it was it's so weird like william william shatner is actually going to space I know. like uh, when i heard that i thought i thought it was a joke at first but he's really going to space yeah <laughs> kirk is up there for real <laughs> um yeah that makes my my nerd heart happy that's and obviously the memes were just <laughs> again um <laughs> that, that's and that must be kind of interesting too because it's like kind of before all of this started and then now you're actually going up i know it's crazy yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so since since you write a lot of songs and sing a lot of songs like what is on your play playlist like what do you listen to mm. It depends on my mood. I'm, I'm, I go all over the place and listen to a lot of different stuff. Um, I, you know, I'd probably be a liar if I didn't say that included Wicked. Um, okay. You no, know, Kristen Chenoweth is incredible. Um, but I love, I really love everything. I, I have been recently really enjoying playing the Fantastics because I just think mm -hmm. it's one of the most beautiful scores. And by beautiful, I literally mean beautiful. Like, you know, Wicked, Into the Woods, they're brilliant scores, but there's something pretty about the Fantastics. The same with um, A Little Night Music. It's just got this, like, kind of pretty. Yeah. You just want to play it, especially the overture. Um, I, but I like something people don't know. I love Hailstorm. I love Lindsay Hale. Really? Um, okay. Oh, yeah. Evanescence. Um, I, I love me some rock music, especially Jethro Tull is the only reason I learned flute was to play Little wow. Breath. You know, um, definitely a, a rock nerd. You know, I love listening to Lady Gaga. I love seeing her go through all the different styles and do them with ease and incredible talent in all of them. And I, I like listening to artists in different languages too, because I love learning languages and I feel like okay. music is like my in. Natalia Jimenez. Oh my God. <laughs> Amazing. Um, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm all over the place. I, you know, I will. I love Ivor. She's incredible. Like I just kind of listen to anything. It just depends on my mood. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. And I was listening to another interview you did, and you mentioned that you have a parrot that actually uh, sits with you when you're doing music, right? Yeah, he's right here. He's right <laughs> over here, which is why I'm in a sound booth. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, he. <laughs> it is it is uncanny. You know, I. I was writing a, an overture for another for a other thing I can't talk about. And uh, I was playing it back on the speakers to make sure that all the levels were right the way I wanted it. And he created, and it was very, it's very counterpoint melody already. And he just picked up this other counterpoint that he invented and sang. And I filmed him. Oh God, and I played nice. it for my mom, like, how this is so cool. Like, how funny. It actually doesn't sound bad. And then he heard the lead in and he did it again. Oh wow! Like he didn't parrot him. He didn't parrot himself. Like he heard the uh, five, six, seven, and ha! And he just came back in again. It's like wow. Uh, he always <laughs> sings the phrase way up high. 
So I wrote him a song called Way Up High. I'm floating way up high. So high I think I might just fall in love. So that he'd have a song he knows the words to. Nice. He won't sing it. He just looks at me. He's like, I know what you want. I'm not going to give it to you. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? Who am I? I'm just doing it. Mm. Um, <laughs> this is the impression part of the, the bad impression part of the interview. But yeah, if he doesn't like it, he doesn't sing. And I just kind of stop and start over. Oh, and wow. Really? He does have a really good ear. Wow. He that's wow. What he likes. Like he loves Judy Garland. He loves Kristen Chenoweth. He loves really? Him. Yes. Um, but, but he does in general have a good ear. So if he's not, if he's not singing along, even though he doesn't know the words as I'm writing it, I'm just like, mm, yeah, what's the point? Oh, there's nothing here. Yeah. Oh, wow. That, yeah. that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't think he's yet to be wrong. Okay. Like he doesn't sing along too. like a month or two later. I'm like, I don't remember what I just wrote. I don't remember that song. It's already gone. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is is there anything coming out that you want to like plug or talk about that you're allowed to? And <laughs> <laughs> right, that's the that's the important part. That I'm allowed to. <laughs> yes, there is many things I'd love to plug. <laughs> um. Yes, actually, uh, I will be doing hair again. Uh, I will be playing Chrissy in the 50th anniversary of Hair here in LA at the El Portal Theater starting in december and i'm i'm very excited to let the sun shine in nice yeah. nice because yeah, what else am i going to do with this anyway really <laughs> I mean, at this point it's like either hair or jesus christ superstar that's pretty much my only options at this point <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> or rapunzel i mean may as well right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, where where can fans find find you at like with your your pages and sure yeah you can on instagram and and twitter i'm at darcy rose burns that's burns b-y-r-n-e-s because it's a fancy spelling it's a normal pronunciation uh you know like george burns but extra and <laughs> on facebook i think it's derose.start and I, YouTube, I think, is Darcy Rose Burns official, I think. And that's, I think, the extent of my socials. Okay. Uh, but you can also just find anything easily at DarcyRoseBurns.com. That's kind of where we put all the links. And, and when I remember, um, put all the links to everything. <laughs> that's probably the easiest to, to find. Yeah. So you're not a, tick, a TikToker or anything? <laughs> I'm not. No, I'm not. Um, I do know that someone has my my name. I think on there, which oh, is weird. really? Uh, yeah, it was kind of strange. Um, but no, I'm just. I kind of. I was always the last one on all the social platforms okay, okay. to use it. I think most of my social media the last like year has just been PR for Big Shot. Gotcha, um, gotcha. Video, um, and and parodies. Parodies kept me entertained during um the quarantine quarantines is what i called them so i think that was like the bulk of my social media but other than that otherwise i would just be like posting pictures of like this is my tea i just made it it's really sweet you can't tell how sweet it is because it's a photo but it's really sweet just trust me like i'm not social media like, gotcha. like ooh, bird videos yes cockatoo swearing ah reminds me of home like i just yeah <laughs> kind of where i live there you go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I want to thank thank you so much for coming on and being a guest. This has been an absolute blast. You you're a very nice person, very funny, and <laughs> and Pulled thank you so one. much. Like, it was it was really fun. I had thank you. I really a am. lot of fun with this. Thank you. Same. Thank you very much. Same to you. Thanks, Rocco. You got it. That was fun. <laughs> well definitely have have a good night and rest of the weekend and happy halloween happy halloween happy halloween <laughs> fighters coming with me <laughs> awesome awesome <laughs> yes, you can catch me as they say on the web there you go dude you go. I, I, like apo that. I apologize that it had to be done that's that's awesome. I like that. <laughs>
<laughs> thank, thank you again for doing this. It's been fun. Thank you. It really was. Thank you. So much. <laughs> All right. Have a good night. You too. Okay. Bye. All right.